Hey, so we all have that one game, or a few games really, that influences growing up. Games that uh, define some of our like gaming taste and identity, really. A lot of people talk about Legend of Zelda, Star Fox, Final Fantasy, Crash Bandicoot, all the classics, right? And those games are classic, especially to me. But there's one game in particular that is very special to me that is not really considered a classic. And it's probably not even really considered an amazing game, but for me, it played a huge role in defining my gaming taste. Lord of the Rings, the third age, was, it came to me at a really interesting time. I got it for Christmas one year. I had never really had much exposure to turn-based um, games. I didn't get a lot of exposure to JRPGs at the time either. But one thing I did love was Lord of the Rings. So this game took two things that I now love today and combined the two. And I know some people would say, oh, it's just a watered down copycat of Final Fantasy X. Well, yeah, in a way it is, but I had actually played this game first. So that's why this game is special to me. I still play it to this day. And with that being said, I hope you'll come with me on this journey as we go briefly through this game to see how well it truly is. This is Lord of the Rings, the third age. Yeah, sadly, this is an EA title. As soon as the main menu pops up, you're immediately blasted with the Lord of the Rings theme. This was truly hype for me when I was a kid. As soon as you hit new game, you're automatically hit with scenes from the movie. And this looked very beautiful for its time. Obviously, it doesn't hold up too well now on modern screens because of how old this game is. But this was hype back in the day when I was first playing this game. And then you get Gandalf narrating everything, which is always classic. Gandalf was... Ian McKellen truly nailed that role as Gandalf. And after all the cinematics, we finally meet our main character, Barathor, who is attacked at the very beginning of the game by a Ringwraith. And you can tell something's eerie right off the bat. They say, fool, it is not yet your time. Like, wait, what are they talking about? Definitely foreshadowing for what's to come in the future of the game. And now we finally get to see the battle system, which is very short lived because we die almost immediately with one hit. And just when it seems like all hope is lost, we are immediately saved by a mysterious elf that pops up out of nowhere to save the day and does this really cool, magical horse water thing, kind of like you see it from the film, which was pretty nostalgic and pretty cool to see in a game at the time. Afterward, we are healed by this mysterious elf lady who then tells us that there's no time to tell us who she is, that we must heal our wounds immediately. And it's at this point that the game finally starts. You can look around, you can walk around, you can see. Immediately, you already kind of tell it's got that kind of linear Final Fantasy X uh, feel to it. But it definitely has its own um, unique feel to it at the same time. I felt like, personally, it doesn't feel too much like Final Fantasy X. It still has its own um, theme and menu and everything to it. You're able to unlock these cool scenes from the film with Gandalf narrating everything that's going on for your party, which I thought was pretty cool and interesting. It definitely keeps the story going. And just like in Final Fantasy X, you go down this kind of narrow path, and you, but there are little areas around you can find like extra chests, you can find cool equipment, actually changes the way your characters look, the rings they wear, the shields, the swords, the armor, everything. It, I thought it was a really cool touch, especially at the PS2 at the time. So I definitely still love that. So we begin our journey, and of course there's a few battles along the way, but this time you actually get to see the combat for what it really is. The way you level up is through traditional experience points, but the way you actually gain more skills is by using the skills in those skill groups, like leadership. The more you use leadership skills, the more leadership skills you learn. And actually, there's like a chart where it shows you how many times you need to use that skill in order to unlock the next skill, which was pretty, pretty cool, I thought. I mean... 
it makes it to where you can unlock the skills very quickly without having to be too high level. So I did appreciate that a lot. Like I've actually gone to the level you see in the very beginning of the game, unlocked all the skills and then like blasted my way through the game just for fun. Just, <laughs> just because I like breaking games. Eventually we do figure out what Barathor is doing. He is looking for Boromir or Gondor, but we don't know why yet. And I'm not entirely convinced he is either. Of course, I played the game, so I know what happens, but the game leaves you hanging kind of like, okay, but why? And I think there's a little bit of a twist there. You'll, you'll see it a little bit later in the game. So we learned our name is Idril, but we don't know too much else about her just yet. So far, she is just accompanying us on our journey. One thing that's definitely a complete copy from Final Fantasy X is the uh, little save spots things where you get fully healed just by saving. That's still there from Final Fantasy X, but that's not a big deal. Not too long later in the game, we come across my favorite character in the game, Elagast. At least that's how I think you pronounce his name. They only say his name like once in the whole game, so forgive me if I say that wrong. But he's a Duda Diamond Ranger, and he's definitely the coolest character in my opinion. I've always had a big love for like Ranger characters, you know, like it, whatever it be, Lord of the Rings, Dungeons and Dragons, really don't matter. Just the whole Ranger, like just who they are, generally speaking, is just I love that um, style. I usually try to kind of mimic that a little bit when I play like Elder Scrolls and things like that. So right off the bat, this dude was definitely my favorite character going into this game. I always wait until I get Aligas first before I start doing some of the side stuff and start exploring a little bit, which there's not a whole lot to explore, but there's a few little side missions that you can do. But I always wait until I get him first because he's my favorite and I want to make sure that one, I have a full party of three, and two, honestly, I just like having the Ranger character before I truly start diving into the game. It's not long after this point that we come across the fellowship camp from the movie where the um, Krabi, I think they were called, the crows that Saruman uses to spy on the um, the party and figure out where they're going. You come across that party, and this is actually the best part, in my opinion, to grind because there's this little area where the little bar fills up on its own. The little, not bar, but the little... Uh, eye the eye fills up on its own that like causes random battles to occur and it's really a great setup to start grinding and kind of doing what i uh was talking about earlier about breaking the game this is where i would go in and start just spamming all these skills to unlock all these cool skills at the very beginning of the game actually i usually go and get Hadhod first, which you get him a little bit later into the game, like right at the end of this first uh, area. You can get him right at the end. We'll get more into that into a minute. But I usually go get him first. I come back. I grind. I get all these skills, level up a little bit, and just hammer my way through like like halfway through the game at least and before I start like coming across like some a little bit more challenge i don't know why it's just fun to me to break these kind of games i, I just love it okay so like i just mentioned later on in this area you get to meet hadhod who is actually a friend of elagast who also seemed to be trying to get to moria as well so it all conveniently works together for you guys to all go to moria and kind of trail behind the fellowship you kind of slowly lag behind them a little bit throughout most of the game Right before you can get to the west door of Moria, you are attacked by the Watcher in the water, just like from the Fellowship. This was a pretty intense fight when I first fought this back when I was like a kid. I really enjoyed this fight. It wasn't too hard or anything. It was just kind of cool to see. This is a really cool opportunity to check out Perfect Mode. Perfect Mode is kind of like a limit break from Final Fantasy, except it's a little different. This blue bar next to the character's names, that slowly fills up every time you do a move. And once it gets full, you're able to activate perfect mode. When you scroll down to the bottom, you see perfect mode. You'll get a list of abilities you can perform. And more of these unlock the further you go into the game and level up. After defeating the creature, he actually clears a path for you to get back into Moria, which was closed off originally by him when the Fellowship first entered. Upon reaching Moria, you're actually able to go back in evil mode and go through the old area 
And if you complete that evil mode, you can get new equipment and you can do this each time you enter a new area. After you complete an area, you can go back in evil mode, get cool equipment from beating it the game in evil mode. It's just kind of cool. It's not really anything amazing, but it is kind of a cool little thing to get some extra cool equipment if you want to give yourself an edge moving forward into the game. As you can see through the map right here, this is a list of all the areas that you will go to. You can see Moria, Rohan, Helm's Deep, Minas Tirith. Rohan and Helm's Deep was my personal favorite. This is where I had the most fun. And I think when the, I truly like, I knew I loved the game right away, but this, when I got the Rohan, this was something, I don't know, there was something that happened that was click for me. But I also kind of really liked Rohan too. I thought Rohan was actually a really cool place in the, in the world of Middle Earth. Also, one thing this game does right that Final Fantasy X didn't do is that even when your characters are not in battle, they still get some kind of experience, which really helps the grind in this game. There's not This game is not very grindy at all, which is very beautiful because it's not a very long game anyway. You don't want to spend your whole time grinding away just to level up all your characters, unlock all the skills and whatnot. Also, after you finish Rohan and get the Helm's Deep, this is when you get all the characters. You now have all six characters once you get to this point in the game. Morwen, and honestly, I don't know how to pronounce this other guy's name. I'm not even sure if they ever say his name in the in the game, honestly. I believe it's pronounced Aodin, but he's from the uh, Royal Guard of Rohan. And he has some pretty cool moves, too. He, he's up there as... Uh, Fighting wise, he's definitely one of my favorites, but you get a, sadly you get him kind of late in the game and his personality doesn't really show a whole lot because by this point you're already like you know, two thirds of the way through the game, sadly. Personally, I always liked it more when you get your characters like kind of early in the game. Like when you get characters kind of late into the game, I don't know, it feels like you don't get the full opportunity to always enjoy them to their fullest ability. This is my opinion. That could just be a personal taste, but personally, I like to be able to get my characters really early in the game. So what else is there left to say about this game? Not much, really. Um, there's some really cool boss battles. You get to fight the Balrog of Morgoth and you get to fight the Witch King and get to fight alongside a lot of uh, classic Lord of the Rings characters. There's a romance between Idriel Thor and Morrowind, kind of a weird triangle there, but that ended pretty disappointingly, honestly, so no point in really going further into that. So what is it? What is it about this game that makes it so amazing? Well, objectively, it's not really amazing. It's just a good, solid game. There's nothing really groundbreaking or revolutionary about it, and that's perfectly fine. It didn't need to be groundbreaking. It did what it set out to do. And for me, it did exactly what I needed it to do, which was introduce me to a whole new world of turn-based RPGs, which has now affected my entire gaming identity to this day. I also remember that being a really good Christmas that year. I remember also, like, shortly after that Christmas, my uncle would come over. I'd be playing the game, but I'd also stop and... Uh, put the game down for a little while and go play Clue or play Spades together, something like that was the family. It was a lot of fun then. I just remember that being a happy time period, not just, it wasn't just the game itself, it was also just, I think, the time period as well. I had a lot of good uh, memories attached to the game. I still remember playing the game Christmas Day, the afternoon, and like a few hours into it, I just remember there was just a sudden moment I was like, wow. It was like, almost like an awakening. I don't know. I don't know if you. I don't know how to describe. It. I don't know if you guys have ever had that feeling when you play certain games. I know I do at times. Um, you just play a game, and a little way into it, you're just like, it's almost like, I know I'm in love with this game. <laughs> I don't know how to describe. It. Maybe you guys know what I'm talking about. I don't know. I don't really have the words for that feeling, but, um, but if you have that feeling, I think you know what I'm trying to get at. And this is one of the few games that gives me that feeling. That's why, for me personally, this game will always be special and classic.
even though objectively it's just a solid game. I hope you enjoyed this brief journey with me going through this game a little bit. Um, This is actually my first video like that. A big video that I've been editing a lot. Usually I don't edit videos this much. So this was uh, also a new experience for me as well. I'm sure it's not perfect by no means. But I hope it's at least enjoyable for you guys. And with that being said, take care. Thank you.